Berlin Pursuit. From VOA Learning English, this is the Education Report in Special English. Lebanon is a nation of many religious groups, Shiites, Sunnis, Druze, Maronite and Coptic Christians, Jews, and others share the land. But often there is tension and sometimes violence. Over the years, the differences between the groups have made it hard for educators to write a unified national history. An agreement in 1989 called the Taif Accord ended the 15-year Lebanese Civil War. The agreement called for the same civic education to be taught across the country. The goal was to increase national unity. But the effort to agree on one national history has failed. Most history textbooks in Lebanon stop in 1943, the year of Lebanese independence. The duty of teaching children about their country's recent history has fallen mainly on parents. That can increase divisions among the different groups. The Green Space School is an elementary school in Beirut. It is on the edge of Christian, Druze, and Shiite neighborhoods. The school's head, Maha Qasim, says these religious ties can make history lessons a source of disagreement. She says some lessons have to be changed to avoid arguments among the students. Syrian forces withdrew from Lebanon in 2005 after a 29-year occupation. A series of protests against the occupation led to the withdrawal. The protests were called the Cedar Revolution, but Lebanese school children may never read about the protests in school. A government committee recently decided to remove the words Cedar Revolution from the education plan for a national middle school history textbook. So, without agreement, Lebanese schools often choose textbooks based on the religion of their students. For VOA Learning English, I'm Carolyn Christian. I'm Alex Villarreal with the VOA Special English Education Report. In the United States, about six out of ten students in graduate schools are women. The same is true of today's young adults who already have a degree beyond college. As a result, the Census Bureau expects that more women than men will hold professions such as doctors, lawyers, and professors. Men had faster growth rates than women in going to graduate school in 2009. Still, women earned 60 percent of the master's degrees. That was the level of about 90 percent of all the graduate degrees awarded. But a new report says the 2008-2009 academic year marked a change. Women also earned 50 and 4 tenths percent of the doctorate degrees. The Council of Graduate Schools says this was the first year ever that women earned more doctorates than men. The largest share of all doctorates that year, 42 percent, were in education, engineering, and biological and agricultural sciences. But the report says between 1999 and 2009, graduate enrollment increased in all subject areas. The fastest growth was in health sciences, business, and engineering. In 2009, graduate schools reported strong growth of 6 percent 
in first-time students from the United States. But enrollment of new international students decreased by about 2 percent, the first drop since 2004. The share of foreign new students in graduate schools fell from 18 percent to 16 and a half percent. In other news, President Obama marked the new school year in September with a speech from a school in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. President Obama told students they need to work hard in school because an education has never been more important than it is today. He said, the farther you go in school, the farther you're going to go in life. He also said this is a time when other countries are competing with us like never before. He said students around the world in Beijing, China or Bangalore, India are working harder than ever and doing better than ever. The president told the students, your success in school is not just going to determine your success, it's going to determine America's success in the 21st century. For VOA Special English, I'm Alex Villarreal. You can find our programs at voaspecialenglish.com and on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and iTunes at VOA Learning English.